So if you come right here to this hamburger sign, you can just click that and then let us look for studios okay because it is inside the studio that we can then create our notebooks notebooks are called workspaces now in uh, in aws okay so i'll create i'll say studios when i click that and then let's see something let's see if we can see something on this getting started it says set up let me see if i can make it bigger awesome it says set up eml studios to help your team develop, visualize, and debug data engineering and data science applications in an integrated environment. Studio setup requires a full step, a few steps. Once configured, you'll be able to effectively manage access and control permissions. You can see that. Okay, it helps you to be able to what? To manage access and control permissions. Okay, look at something right here. It says, Create studio it said create as many EML studios for your team as you need to access features, control cl clusters, manage templates, and all of that. Okay, so we need to create this studio. Okay, and then inside which we are going to create uh, our Jupyter notebook, which is going to be workspaces. Okay, so let us click create studio. Now let us give our studio a name. I'm going to give it this name, Redfin Data Team. I will paste it right here. It says provide a unique name for your EML studio. This will be the name your studio team sees when they log in. Okay. Now, now that we have that, it says after you have created a studio, you will then be able to add users to it and refine permissions. That's interesting, guys. So now, in my case, I'll leave the description and the tags. Now, I need to select which VPC. Remember, we created VPC previously, okay? So you, you just need to make sure that you know what uh, the, the, the alphanumeric, you know, uh, code for the VPC. You can come to your VPC uh, page. You know, remember, we have not closed this, but if you have closed it, you can just type VPC and then go there. Okay, let us look at our VPC right here. You can see where we created our VPC. You can see the, the alphanumeric code right here. The last digit is D608. If we come here, you can see I have D608. I will just select that. If you don't have yours, just go to your VPC. You know, just type VPC and go to your different VPC and be sure that you have which one you can see this one was what i had before if i refresh this is the one we just we just created d608 that is this red field emr vpc okay remember we want to create the studio right now and then let us check our subnets okay so we can select you can select both subnets we can select both subnets because we are two subnet that were created as part of our vpc okay then i can come here and say default security group i can select that then i can just leave it this way i want to enable clusters endpoint and git repository although we are not using git repository in this video okay and then the next thing we are going to be doing right now is that we are going to come down all these are optional i will leave it that way i am service role now remember we created the service role the last time when we were creating our emr okay now the service role usually it has a timestamp of when you were creating it okay like this one was 2023 october 23 and the timestamp 11 o'clock 42 seconds okay so this is the service role that we just created okay so guys we need workspace storage what is this workspace storage this is where your jupyter notebook that you are going to be using in this studio will be saved okay now in the case of this one if i come to browse s3 i i, I don't want to create i don't want to use any of this s3 bucket i'm going to create another s3 bucket for this by the way if you remember that when we were selecting the emr when we are creating the EMR, 
we asked EML to automatically create an S3 bucket where those logs for the EML is going to be saved. You can see now it has saved it right now. If I come to my S3 bucket, if I refresh, remember before it was only this four. If I refresh this now, we should see it now. You can see, you can see it's right here, guys. This is where our logs will be saving, okay? However, for the Jupyter Notebook that we are talking about right now, let us go and create another S3 bucket where we want to be create where we want to be saving the Jupyter notebook that we are going to be using here so i'll say create bucket i will give it this name make sure it's in the region you want and then i will leave every other thing the way they are i will say create bucket i'll click create bucket or oh, something is wrong oh it says that bucket name contains invalid character it doesn't want underscore so I'll use dash and then i will say create bucket you can see bucket has been successfully created i'll go back to my studio and then i can refresh you can see right here guys that this is the one we just created so i would select this and then i will choose so now i have chosen that my jupyter notebook should be saved inside this workspace storage okay and then i will click create studio okay now you can see it's trying to create it did not create what's going on so there is an error right here it says the service role does not have permission to access this bucket remember we just created this bucket so our service role does not have access does not have permission to access this bucket so what we can do is remember that we had created the service role remember this is the service role we are talking about right here this service role this service role take note the timestamp is 110042 so what we can do is we can go to our i am uh let's go to our i am page right there i will open a new tab let us go and look for that service role and let us give it s3 full permission and also administrative role so that it can be able to have access to our s3 bucket so we'll come to rows we'll come to rows and this is the role you can remember 110042 that i just talked about this is the service role that was created during our emr when we were provisioning our emr okay so i'll select this or better still just click on it just click on it and then you can come right to add permissions say attach permissions i can select administrator access or you can search for it i can also search for s3 this is amazon s3 full access i will check this so now we are giving it administrator access and s3 full access i will click add permissions you see it says policies have been successfully attached i will close this you can see now administrator access s3 full access very good guys i hope you guys are getting this again guys if you are new on this channel go ahead right now and subscribe to our channel okay and click on the bell so that you can be notified whenever we release any of our videos okay now guys let us come back right here now let us create studio again create studio let's see now you can see it's successfully created i'll close this close this now you can see that we have created our studio you can see this is our studio name this is the creation time it is authenticated by the iam because we gave it access then this is the studio access url url very good guys now i hope you guys are getting this okay now that we have created our studio now let us now create a jupyter notebook okay remember the jupyter notebook is going to be inside this studio name right so that means all the jupyter notebooks that we are going to be using are going to be inside the studio name right and we can give different users access to this okay now if i click on this studio access url click on this it opens a new tab and then you can see that it comes to this workspace and i just told you that workspace is basically 
our uh, Jupyter notebook. So I'll click on create workspace. I'll click on that and then I'll give my workspace a name. Okay. So that means you can have different, you know, workspaces inside this studio. Okay. So now I've given it this workspace and take note that this workspace is basically uh we are going to be you can see this s3 location like i said that this is just telling you that this is the s3 bucket that our notebook is going to be stored okay so we are creating our workspace right here and then leave this description leave this s3 location the way it is because this is where our jupyter notebook is going to be stored and then all, all these are the networks that we have that we have um, created or that we have assigned we created the vpc before right and then these are the vpcs that we have assigned to our studio okay and uh, our studio also have created these uh the security groups these default security groups right here so let us do create workspace let us click that now it's running you can see now guys that it says successfully created workspace redfin emr workspace now you can see right here okay there is an error it says unable to launch workspace this workspace make sure your browser allows pop-ups for this site so that means that we are not able to eventually open our jupyter notebook because we have a pop-up uh, uh because we need to allow pop-ups right so i'll come right to this pop-up right here that was blocked because i'm blocking pop-ups on my browser so i'll click this and i will say always allow pop-ups and redirect you know this so just click that if i say done that should be good that should be good what i can then do now is i can click on this workspace name and then this is going to open up my jupyter notebook for me so just make sure that you disable your pop-up blocker okay just disable it if you want to be able to open it or just give it permission to be able to to be able to allow pop-ups you know so i'm going to i'm going to click on this right now you can see i've clicked on it and now you can see guys that it is opening up jupyter notebook for me guys very good very good you can see jupyter lab is being open right now very good guys i hope you guys are getting it and you can see the name of the workspace that we created redfin emr workspace dot ipynb that's the jupyter notebook you can see that guys you can see now we have our jupyter notebook however we still need to assign this to a particular emr a particular cluster that we want okay even though we have created a studio remember what we did before was to create a studio and then we created a workspace and basically your workspace is your jupyter lab right so now so your jupyter lab inside the studio but then we need to attach this notebook to the e to the actual emr that we want so if you come right here to this emr compute to this emr compute i will click this okay and then make sure you are selecting emr cluster on, on ec2 and then i'll come right here you can see this is our this is our cluster that we had created before i will select this so now i want to attach this notebook right to the emr so i will click attach this runtime just leave it that way and then i will attach okay now it's going to attach right now and if you remember what i told you previously when we were configuring or when we were provisioning our emr right we selected uh jupyter uh jupyter gateway or something what was that called again jupyter enterprise gateway okay remember we selected that if we did not install that in our emr then we wouldn't have been able to to attach our jupyter lab or jupyter notebook to this emr so if you come right here to this computer again let us see if it is attached you can see now it says cluster is attached to the workspace you can see it is attached now this jupyter notebook is inside this is inside this um uh, this cluster this emr cluster very good guys 
I hope you guys are getting it. Okay. So now we have been able to create a Jupyter notebook or a Jupyter lab notebook on top of our existing cluster. Okay. And also remember that we needed to disable our pop up blocker for this particular site for us to be able to do that. Okay. Very good, guys. Now, the next thing now we want to now do is that we want to now start we want to work on extracting data from the redfin data center and then do some transformation okay